just quickly turn uh, to uh, with me to the Bible to so the book of Luke. Uh, Luke uh, chapter 4. And uh, I just want to just, I believe that this has got to be a foundation for our lives. And uh, it's what Jesus said in verse 18. And he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. He closed the book. And then he said, today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Then he also said in John, he said, these things that I do, you shall do also. And I believe that the Spirit of God is trying to get hold of our lives, to equip us to go out and be the church. Amen. To go out and do all those things that God uh, anointed Jesus to do. And I believe that that was the ministry of Jesus in a nutshell. And that's what he's all about. Today, I want to just share uh, what I believe is something that's very, very important to us. And the key, or a key, one key to spiritual growth. How many people want to grow spiritually? Grow in God and get, get a, a, an understanding. This is only one of the keys. Jesus said in Matthew 16, verse 19, and I, Jesus, will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you find on earth will be bound or will be loosed in will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. I believe that this is just one key that I want to bring to our attention. And it's a key that I believe that is uh, we've sort of let slip away, but it's the key of meditation. Everybody say meditation. False religions and uh, cults have uh, made a sham of meditation. Meditation, somehow or other, when we talk about meditation, we go to some mystical thing and we think of, you know, the sitting there going boom or whatever it might be. But uh, really, meditation really means to mutter, to mutter the Word of God, to meditate, to mutter the Word of God. And we're just going to share a little bit more about that. Uh, in Matthew 4, verse 4, Jesus said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. It's very, very important for you and I to get a hold of the Word of God and to be able to understand what it is. And as Primrose was saying there today about, you know, knowing what God has made available to us. Knowing what God says about a circumstance or a situation. Knowing not just what I feel or how I feel, but really what does God say about it. So I can attach myself or harness myself to what God says and not allow the negative of life or, the, or what I, how I feel to, to control my actions. Uh, we are to meditate on God's Word and feed on Scripture relating to our needs or situations. In other words, what I'm saying is, if you've got an anger problem, it's no good uh, looking up all the scriptures on prosperity. Now, now, that will help you, obviously. You'll know a lot about prosperity. But we need to understand what God says about the situation that I face, what I'm going through, what, what I need to know, what, you know, whether it's, if you're sick, you need to hear what God says about sickness. And uh, so forth and so from. I believe that uh, the Hebrew word for meditation is H-A-G-A-H. Hagar. Which means to mutter. We have to mutter God's word to ourselves and to others. It says in the book of Joshua 1 verse 8. It says the book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. But you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. So it's not a matter of just hearing it, but when you mutter it, when you get a hold of it, when you, when you get the word into you and you keep speaking it out, sometimes we can, we can hear something, but we don't act on it. Sometimes we can know the truth, but we don't do anything really about the truth. So if you start to mutter it, if you start to speak it out, and not only to yourself, but speak it out to others as well, what happens is it starts to build something in you 
that when the enemy comes, and the enemy does come, anybody knows that the enemy does come to steal, he comes to rob, uh, what does he come to rob, to steal, and to kill, and destroy, and all that sort of stuff. And he wants to steal the word of God out of your heart. But if you've got something there, and when the enemy does come, then you can rise up something because you start to speak the word, you start to mutter the word into that situation. Otherwise, if you don't do that, your feelings will mutter to you. Amen? Your feelings will tell you you're no good. The feelings will, te will tell you you'll never make it. The feelings will tell you, you know, that you know it'll never happen for you. It may happen for somebody else, but it will never happen for you. So I believe that we've got to understand, we've got to let the word, we've got to meditate on the word. Let the words of my mouth, it says in Psalm 19 verse 14, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer, or my strength and my rock. How many people know that God is our rock? We can rest on our rock. It says in Psalm 77 verse 12, and I will meditate on the work, on your work, and talk of your deeds. I will meditate on your work, 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 and talk of your deeds. In 1903, we had a move of God that was really quite interesting. And a lot of people didn't understand it. I didn't really understand it either. But we went to, Nancy and I went to America. And uh, just after 93, where we've experienced an amazing outpouring of God's Spirit on our lives. Where God just did beyond what I could ever imagine or think. And we went over to America and uh, we rang a Jan Painter up and Jan uh, had invited us to come and share at her church. And we, we got to the uh, airport and uh, Jan picked us up from the plane and uh, she took us straight to a restaurant and uh, we sat there and we ordered our meal and then Jan said, Neil and Nance, what's going on? What's God doing? And we started to mutter. We started to talk about the outpouring of the Spirit. We started to say what God was doing in people's lives. And, and, and you know, that the Spirit of God. And as we muttered it, as we spoke about God's works and God's deeds, the Spirit of God came down over us. And Jan Painter, if you many people know Jan Painter, Jan Painter slipped off her seat and went straight underneath uh, the table. And she came up after a few seconds and, and, and shook herself and she said, forget about the dinner, forget about the meal, my church at the moment are having music practice, come and meet the musicians. And we went straight from there to the musicians and um, Jan has just got the musicians to come over here and meet Neil and Nance and um, she said, uh, it's all yours. <laughs> and, you know, we've got about 15 uh, of their musicians or whatever might have been there. And uh, they're all just standing there. And I just started to mutter about what God was doing. How God, but people were being touched by the Spirit. People were being healed. People were being delivered. People were falling out of the power and the anointing. And goodness knows what else. And, and as we shared, there was a, a, a big uh, uh, African-American lady. She was quite a big lady. And uh, and all of a sudden, she started going, <laughs> and she, she and, and next minute she took off and she started running around and around and around the building. And, and uh, she said, my feet are on fire, my feet are on fire. And, and uh, you know, and all of a sudden, the, the, all the people there just got slain in the spirit and, and the presence of God. You see, as you mutter, and as you talk of God's works, God sort of comes down in amongst that. You know what I'm talking about? And uh, we preached for four days, I think, at uh, Jan's church. She never heard one me one message. She was underneath, once at this time, uh, when we were at the music practice, she ended up underneath the pulpit. And the rest of the means she was always under, she was under her seat. And, uh, but I'm just saying, you know, we can be manipulated, if, if you like, by the enemy to believe that nothing's happening or, or this or that. But when you start talking about what God is doing and what God has done, then you know you do that. We were also in a restaurant over there and, and we met up with Andrew, Andrew Einstein, and uh, Demas Shikarian and his uh, brother or his son was uh, sitting just opposite us. And uh, we were there and Andrew and we just started to talk about the good things that God was doing. And as we did that, the presence of God just came down and just filled us again. 
And, and Dean was securing with them and he said, what's going on with you guys? And we went over and started talking with them, started to share with them. And, but I'm just saying, friend, you know, let the Spirit of God get a hold of you. Start muttering what God says. Get a hold of the Word of God. Amen. How many people want the Word of God around our lives? So, you know, let the meditation of our heart and so forth. Uh, we can also meditate and speak on wrong things. I'm sick. I'm no good. I'll never make it. You, you can't do that. We're, we're, we're wanting to share today about meditating on God's Word. Amen. Meditating on the Word of God. As we meditate on God's Word uh, that is relevant to our need, God will speak by revelations. Sometimes contrary to what the way we want to go. How many people know that when God speaks, it's not always what we want? That's why Jesus had to say, not my will, but thine be done. That's why Mary had to say, according to your word, be it under me. I, I, this is going to give me a lot of trouble, what you're saying to me, God. You're telling me I'm going to get pregnant from my dad and even have a husband. And this is going to cause me a lot of trouble, but glory to God, you know, you're God after all. Amen. Just like us, when we were on an, in an airplane coming home, mind our own business, and God said, come and start it. Playing a church on the Sunshine Coast. Well, it's a lot of trouble, God. <laughs> Sometimes it's not what we want to do. But you know, if you remember, when uh, Jesus came and he spoke to the disciples and he said, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And of course, they said, Some say you're Elijah, some say you're Jeremiah, some say you're one of the prophets, some say you're this. But then he said, But who do you say that I am? And then Peter stood up and, 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 he, and he spoke something out. And as he spoke it out, he said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And, and then Jesus said to him, He said, Hey, I've got something to say to you. Flesh and blood, your emotions, your, your feelings haven't said that to you. But my Father, who is in heaven, He has spoken this revelation to you. And friend, can I say it again and again and again and again? We're living in a day when we really, really, really need to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Because there's a lot of funny doctrine out there right now, okay? There's a lot of great men and women of God that are sharing some funny stuff, amen? We've got one guy there that's gone back to the Catholic Church. And I don't understand that. But, you know, he's obviously... But he was a man that... Yeah, I won't go any further with that. <laughs> a great man of God, and uh, that's the way it is. Growing spiritually... Uh, should not be a struggle. Amen. Can I say that? Growing spiritually should not be a struggle. When I first got saved, the greatest advice I ever received was read the four Gospels and get to know Jesus. Amen. That's all I did. I sat there and I read Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. I just kept reading them, and in there I found a Savior. I under, started to understand His personality. I started to understand who He was. I started to understand that He was no respecter of persons. I started to understand it didn't matter whether you're big or small or great or large or, or whoever you were, whether you're a king or a pauper, He loved you just the same. I found out that He was open and He was willing and just looking for people that wanted Him. He just wanted real, real people. One of the things that I've tried to do as much as I can in, my, in the whole time that I've been ministering is be real. I am no superman. I am no super spiritual person. I'm a real man just like anybody else. But I've got a real God who wants to touch and move supernaturally through somebody that's real. Amen. You can be super, super spiritual. You can, you can try to, uh, to struggle. You don't have to struggle to grow physically. It happens if you eat the right physical food. Amen? Amen. Read the right. Likewise, spiritual growth is not attained through struggling or straining. I see too many people trying to struggle and strain to, to find favor with God or to find ministry or whatever it might be. You don't have to do that. The struggle comes because we want our growth to be instant. Struggle comes because we want to be, uh, you know, mature now, or we want to be like Benny Hinn Ministry now. I want to be like Benny now. I, I want to be like Catherine Coolman now. Now you, I just want to be like Neil. I just want to be Neil like Jesus. Amen. Amen. I just want to be Jesus. Uh, that's all we want. 
Best advice I got was just read the four Gospels. What an amazing thing. I needed, I needed as a new Christian to find a whole new way of living. Because I'd already, at 27 years of age, been programmed in another way. I'd already been programmed in another way. I've been programmed that you get stuck by force. I was programmed you get, you know, you can buy by this or by that. That's how you got it, by being angry and being yeah, demanding and all that sort of stuff. Anybody else been like this? Anybody else like me? Or am I the only person here that's telling the truth today? <laughs> Give me a wave and tell the truth and shame the devil, amen. But I, I, I was anybody else? Had, were you programmed in the way you lived, how, how you got things, what you did? But now when I got saved, the reason I had to read the four Gospels, I had to find a whole new way of living. I had to find out what guys like Peter and others that, that also were programmed in a way of living, and they had to find another way. They had to find a way of trust. They had to find a way of faith. They had to find a way of believing. They had to just find that way and, and, and getting, hanging around Jesus is the best thing you can ever do. Amen. Hang around Jesus and you'll change. Hang around Jesus and that's what will happen. Uh, you know, you've just got to find a whole new way of living. We're talking about meditation. The Bible says in Matthew 6.33, it says, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. That sounds simple to me. Seek first the kingdom of God. Have you ever seen a Christian trying to prove how spiritual they are? Trying to act like as if I don't know what. I was silly enough last night to watch, uh, or the other day, to watch... Uh, Tarzan, I think it was. <laughs> Most young men today want to act like Tarzan, smell like, no. <laughs> Look like Tarzan, smell like Jane, and act like Cheetah. <laughs> Got that right after a while. Obviously, it wasn't in my notes. <laughs> Have you ever seen a three year old boy? Trying to grow a moustache like his father's. You know, he can do whatever he likes, he'll never grow one until he's... But if he hangs around long enough, it'll happen, amen? If he hangs around long enough, it'll happen. And it will happen, amen? And with what, what we've got to understand is that God wants to do a work in us. Because I've seen a lot of Christians that are new Christians in our day, they get a little bit of knowledge. How many people know a little bit of knowledge is bad? <laughs> they get a little bit of knowledge, and, and, and I'm, 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 I've got to confess that this has happened to me. That you're there and you can spend weeks and weeks and weeks with a person trying to help them and so forth, and then all of a sudden you'll blow it. Because your personality or whatever it is hasn't been changed. And that thing, that one little trick will hit you, bang, and then all you blow the whole deal. I want to tell you, I believe that God wants to, us to grow naturally, grow in God, and you'll find yourself doing things that you never ever thought you would do. Trying to grow a moustache, he struggles, but it won't happen, but if he just keeps eating fish and physical, one day the moustache will come without any struggle. You know, you've got to take time to feed the spirit man. Take time to feed the spirit man. One of the things in our busy world today, um, we, we don't take time. We don't take time to, 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 to do what God wants to do, to mutter God's word. It's not how you feel or how you think. Your today is a result of what you have said and confessed in the past. Your today is a result. If you're, going, if you're struggling, it's a result of what you're saying. And God wants to change us. Christianity is not merely a belief, but it's also a confession. Some Christians believe in uh, Jesus, but are ignorant or deny what Jesus has won for us at Calvary. 
Mark 11 and 24, we all know that. Uh, believe believe uh, those things that he says will be done. And whatever you ask for, believe that you have received them and you will have them. It's a confession. It's, it's you know, I've, I've heard a lot of people say about some of the moves and some of the different groups. It's name it and claim it. It's more than just that, amen. It's understanding. We just don't do that. We, we, how many people want what God's got for you? How many people know that God wants what you, you know, what He's done for you? You know, God wants you to experience what His Son Jesus has won for you. He wants you to have it. You know, uh, many people are concerned for their children. How, how can I help my children? How can I help my grandchildren? How can I help people? What can I do? I just got written down some scriptures here that I believe that if we could meditate on them. Say if you've got your child and you sat them down on the bed, where it might be, and say, hey, Joe, and Fred, and Mary, where it might be, I just want to, you know, let's meditate on the Word of God. Let's just, and get them to repeat it after you. This is what it says in Deuteronomy 5.16. If you've got your child to say this, I honor my mother and father as the Lord my God has commanded me, that my days may be long and, I, and it may be well with me in the land which the Lord my God has given me. In Judges 13, 24 and 25, I grow and the Lord blesses me and the Spirit of the Lord moves in my life. You got, you got children that, you know, just saying these sort of things. You know, when things start to go wrong, when they, they, they want to disobey you, they've got something inside them now that can rise up against it. And say, hey, no, you're going to honor your mother and your father. You're not going to do what's wrong. You're going to honor your mother and father. But if they don't have that in there, there's nothing to come up. <laughs> that okay? If we don't have the Word of God in there, when trouble comes, there's nothing to come up. There's nothing that God can work on. We've got, to, we've got to do our bit, I believe. What Samuel says, As Samuel was offered to the Lord, so I offer my life to the Lord. 1 Samuel 2, 11, 21. I minister unto the Lord and grow before Him. Does this make any sense? 1 Samuel 2, 26. I grow in favor with the Lord and with man. One cent, uh, sorry, sorry, Psalm 127 verse 3. I am a heritage of the Lord. I am not a mistake. Proverbs 15, 20 and Proverbs 29, 3. I am wise and make my parents glad. I love, I love godly wisdom and my parents rejoice. Proverbs 20, 11. I am known by my deeds that my works are pure and right. Proverbs 22, 6. Am I boring you? I am trained up in the way that I should go in the Lord, and when I am old, I will not depart from it. Can you, if you set your child down and put something inside you like that and meditate on it, give it and say it back to you and so forth, these are just abbreviated, uh, obviously, of the verse. Ephesians 6.13, I obey my parents in the Lord, for this is right, and I will live long on the earth. What I'm saying to you today is if the enemy comes in and stirs up something and puts something negative, if there's nothing on the inside for God to work on, we're just going to accept what the enemy says. But I want to tell you, if a kid can say, no, I'm going to obey my parents because I'm going to live wrong on the earth. Amen. I'm going to do, this is right in God's sight. Now, Primrose said, time. I have now got 93 scriptures I'm going to give you that you can write. And I'm going to get these all typed out for next week. Thank you. And uh, you can have them. Thank you. Did you know in Jesus I have life and the life is the light of the world? John 1.4 In Jesus 
I have eternal life, John 3, 15 and 16. In Jesus, I have been justified, Romans 3, 25. In Jesus, I have peace with God, Romans 5, verse 1. In Jesus, I am loved of God, Romans 5, 8. In Jesus, I have abundance of grace, Romans 5, 17. In Jesus, I reign in life, Romans 5, 17. In Jesus, I walk in the newness of life, Romans 6, 4. In Jesus, I am alive under God, Romans 6, 14. In Jesus, I am... Uh, I bring forth fruit under God, Romans 7, 4. In Jesus I have no condemnation, Romans 8. In Jesus I have been made free from the law of sin and death, Romans 8, 2. In Jesus I live by the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, Romans 8, 21. Amen. Amen. Okay. In Jesus I am a child of God, Romans 8, 16. In Jesus I am an heir of God, Romans 8, 17. You can go home and you can tell our preacher preached a hundred certain scriptures today. <laughs> in Jesus, I am a joint heir with Christ, Romans 8, 17. In Jesus, I, free, I freely receive all things from God, Romans 8, 20, uh, 32. In Jesus, I am more than a conqueror, Romans 8, 37. In Jesus, nothing can separate me from the love of God. But I want to tell you, if you've got all this stuff, if you take 10 of these a day and read the whole scripture and get that inside you, when the enemy comes in like a flood, God can raise up a standard against him. If there's nothing in there, there's nothing to rise up. There's nothing to rise up. Nothing can separate me from the love of God. Romans 8, 38, 39. I am, in Jesus, I am sanctified. 1 Corinthians 1, 2. In Jesus, I am enriched in all knowledge. 1 Corinthians 1, 5. In Jesus, I have wisdom. In 1 Corinthians 1, 30. In Jesus, I have righteousness. 1 Corinthians 1, 30. In Jesus, I, am, I have sanctification. 1 Corinthians 1, 30. In Jesus, I have redemption. 1 Corinthians 1, 30. I shall be... In Jesus, in Jesus, I shall be resurrected. Amen. 1 Corinthians 15, 20, 22. In Jesus, I'm up, up, only up to 27. <laughs> in Jesus, I have victory over death. 1 Corinthians 15. Uh, 55, 57. In Jesus, all the promises of God are yes and amen to me. 2 Corinthians 1.20. In Jesus, I am established. 2 Corinthians 1.21. In Jesus, I am anointed of God. 2 Corinthians 1.21. You're looking like a cow in a new game. <laughs> in Jesus, I always triumph. 2 Corinthians 2.14. I am Jesus. I am the sweet smelling fragrance of God. 2 Corinthians 2.15. I don't have to smell like Jane. Uh, in Jesus, my mind is renewed and enlightened. 2 Corinthians 3.14. In Jesus, I am a new creature. Uh, I won't do the scriptures, okay? I'll just do the, what's it, let's say. In Jesus, I have uh, the ministry of reconciliation. In Jesus, I am an ambassador for but ambassador for God. In Jesus, I am the righteousness of God. In Jesus, I live by the power of God. Amen. Yes. In Jesus, I have liberty. In Jesus, in Jesus, I am redeemed from the curse of the law. In Jesus, I have the blessing of Abraham. In Jesus, I am the Son of God. In Jesus, I have faith which works by love. In Jesus, I am blessed with all spiritual blessings. In Jesus, I have been chosen before the foundation of the world. In Jesus, I am accepted of God. In Jesus, I have the life of God. In Jesus, I now sit in heavenly places. In Jesus, I have exceeding uh, riches of God, God's grace and kindness. In Jesus, I am His workmanship. In Jesus, I am created for God's works. 52. Uh, in Jesus, I am now built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. In Jesus, I have boldness and access with confidence before God. In Jesus, I am a shining light. In Jesus, I am strong in the power of God's might. In Jesus, I have the high calling of God. In Jesus, I do not worry. Praise God. In Jesus, I have the peace of God which passes all understanding. In Jesus, I have the uh, peace of God that guards my heart and mind. In Jesus, I have strength. In Jesus, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. All my, in Jesus, all my needs are met according to His riches in glory. In Jesus, I have been delivered from the power of darkness. 64. In 
Jesus, I have been translated into the kingdom of God. In Jesus, I have redemption through His blood. In Jesus, I have forgiveness. In Jesus, I am reconciled to God. In Jesus, I am made complete and perfect. In Jesus, I have the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. In Jesus, my life is hid in Him. In Jesus, I have abundant love. In Jesus, I have obtained salvation through eternal glory. In Jesus, I am saved to the uttermost. In Jesus, I, have, I can't read my own body. In Jesus, I have eternal redemption. In Jesus, I have eternal inheritance. 76. In Jesus, I am made perfect in every good work to do His will. In Jesus, I have abundance of mercy from, from God. In Jesus, I have... I have a living hope. In Jesus I have joy unspeakable. In Jesus I am the holy uh, priest of God. In Jesus I am perfected, established, strengthened and settled. In Jesus I have fellowship with all believers. In Jesus I have redempt, I have received the anointing which teaches me all things. In Jesus I have the Spirit of God. In Jesus I have overcome the devil, the flesh and the world. Amen. 86. <laughs> in Jesus, God dwells in me. Everybody say, praise God. Praise God. <laughs> in Jesus, I have the love of God. In Jesus, I have no fear. In Jesus, I, I have overcome the world. In Jesus, I have victory. In Jesus, I have understanding. In Jesus, I know God. Thank you. Oh. If you take five or six of those scriptures and they're just abbreviated scriptures and look them up and read them and start muttering them and start speaking them out and starting to say, that's who I am. Because when the devil comes to you and says, you're no good, you say, hey, listen here, I've got 93 scriptures that tells me I am. Amen. I've got, I've, got, I've got the kingdom. I've got more inside me than you know, boy. And you start hitting me with the word of God. See, Jesus overcame Satan by the blood of the Lamb and the word of the Testament. Love not their lives under death. Jesus came and he spoke the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the heart of God. He brought the word of God against him. When he said, I blah, 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 he said, no, no, no. No, 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 by the hair of my chin, chin, chin. I will tell you, this is what it's all about. This is who I am. I am the redeemed of God. I am loved by God. God loves me, amen. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. I tell you what, I am the power of God in me. I have been filled with the mighty Holy Spirit. I've got this, I've got that. You know, I tell you what, you, you talk to those people like that, they start running off. You talk to those people who come to you with those silly books about silly things and you start telling them about Jesus, it don't take them long because they're running down your driveway. Amen. I don't know you, but that's who I am. That's what we've got to get a hold of, who you are, what we've done, and where we're at, amen. Fight the devil with the word, the word. You know, I don't have to fight him, I don't have to fix it. I tell you what, friend, I see more people get knocked over trying to fight the devil physically because if they shouldn't go in there, I just got to speak the word. Speak the word only. Speak the word. You remember the centurion? Speak your word. My, my, that thing, that the demon, that thing, that unclean thing, that sickness that's in my, my, my man's body, it'll go in Jesus' name. Speak the word. I, I don't have this, I don't have the fighting physically. Praise God for that, amen. I just gotta speak the word. The word says that I am saved. I am redeemed, I'm delivered, I'm full of the Holy Ghost. I've got my, no weapon formed against me can prosper. That's what the word of God says. What is it? See, if you've got nothing in, if we don't have it inside us, when he comes, he says, Oh, you, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're, you're right, Bill. Unfortunately, the trouble is, a lot of things he says is that element of truth in him. But we know what it's about. It's come to destroy. The enemy only comes for one purpose to rob, to kill. To destroy. Jesus said, I come to give you life. I want the word of God. How many people want the word of God? Come on, let's drop their hands. Why don't we stand at our feet? Oh, God, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Come on, I want to mutter the word. I want to speak the word of God. I want to mutter the word of God. 
I'm, I'm, it's a word, the word, the word, the word, the word. Spirit word, I'm a word. Revelation about who you are. Revelation. Get your kids and start sharing those few scriptures. I'll put out those as well. And so you sit down on a bed with your kids and you sit down there. Oh, yes. It's what I worship your honor here today, Lord. You gave us your word. You are the word. You cannot separate our God from the word. The word became flesh. Dwells among men. Your word. Worthy. Your word. I want to give you the word. 